Hey there, what's up? Are you tired of boring military simulators that lack realism, physics, and a detailed damage system? Well, I've got some good news for you. There's a game that has all of that, and even some sweet bonuses for new players. Can you guess which game I'm talking about? War Thunder, the game by Gaijin Entertainment, the developer of games that have given the community such projects as Crossout, Enlisted, CRSED, so War Thunder is planes, tanks, and ships, helicopters, drones, and various wheeled vehicles. In this video, we'll go over the main aspects of the game, discuss the strengths and weaknesses of the project, and if you disagree with something, feel free to write your thoughts in the comments. And if you suddenly want to check everything yourself, the link to the game will be in the description. And most importantly, it's not empty, but with cool bonuses right at the start of the game. But I'll tell you about this a little later because it's quite important. Let's go! Many consider War Thunder to be too complex and serious, so they leave for more arcade-style projects. But let's be honest, it is precisely because of its hardcore nature that there is a special pleasure in defeating an enemy. I hope you won't kick me in the comments if I compare War Thunder to Escape from Tarkov. Yes, they are completely different games, thank you for noticing. But what sets them apart and unites them against others is one fundamental characteristic. Both of these games are about precise and deliberate gameplay, as any hit can be deadly, and realism is taken into account. If you enjoy a serious approach to games and appreciate deliberate and precise gameplay in Tarkov, try War Thunder. I think you'll like it. If you're a demanding gamer and hate casual health bars and other games, you can confidently try out War Thunder, where any vehicle, whether ground, air, or sea, can be destroyed with a single accurate shot. There are no traditional health bars for vehicles, but there is a crew. In my opinion, this is better implemented in terms of gameplay. You're shown in X-Ray who exactly died or was injured, and you feel like you're controlling a real tank with living people inside, where each one plays an important role and directly affects behavior in battle. Any loss of crew members can be critical. You can't withstand 10 hits in a row knowing that nothing really threatens you until your health bar runs out, like in World of Tanks. Here, any loss of personnel can lead to defeat, as there are no unimportant people in the tank. And just speaking about realism, look at the physics of the vehicles. You can really feel the weight during turns, whether it's a tank or a ship. Currently, the game has 10 countries and over 600 types of ground, air, and sea vehicles. And the most interesting thing is that all this variety of iron monsters has quite modest requirements for your PC. Look for yourself. The game will run on practically any laptop on minimal settings, and even the maximum settings don't require too much, except for the fact that you will need to prepare 92 gigabytes on your hard drive if you want to play War Thunder with maximum texture quality. The higher they are, the more space the game will take up on your hard drive. But let's imagine that all this information is not important and you want to hear something more captivating right now because it's not very impressive. Then the following information is for you. Almost all of the vehicles are historically accurate and have been meticulously recreated in the game. The developers have a maniacal dedication to making their models look like real prototypes. Of course, those that actually existed and not just prototypes that were never produced. But a lot, and I emphasize, a lot of the vehicles have been worked out in great detail. And this is not accidental. How long your tank, plane, or ship will last depends on where the shell hits, whether it's in the ammunition or transmission, crew member, or just the body in an empty space. One shot is far from uncommon, especially in the case of ground vehicles. The same situation applies to the arenas. Many maps, especially for ground vehicles, replicate real places of battle. If you're a fan of this topic or have knowledge of history, then you will definitely appreciate Gaijin's approach to their game. The most interesting thing is that multiple types of vehicles can participate in battles at the same time, for example, ground and air or sea and air. In general, everything is quite flexible and variable. And if you're worried that as a new player, others have a lot of different vehicles while you only have the starting ones, there's a special link in the description for you. By registering through it, you'll get seven days of premium and three types of premium level vehicles, as well as discounts on purchases, vehicle backups, and 100,000 silver. If you don't know if it's cool or not, I'll say it simply. Previously, in War Thunder, new players weren't given anything at all, but suddenly there's an attraction of unprecedented generosity. Register through the link in the description and get everything right from the start of the game. But where can you try all of this? Well, here, realistic or arcade modes for ground, air, or sea vehicles. By the way, you participate in battles until you have vehicles in your hangar. 
or until you lose points in capturing points. The longest battles happen on the fleet, so perhaps players don't particularly love this type of battle. There is, of course, a shooting range where the number of deaths is not limited, but the only downside is that you don't get any profit in terms of leveling up from this mode. You can only develop your vehicles through battle experience gained in arcade and realistic battles. That's how it is. And as for donations, yes, they exist here. Just don't say you didn't expect it. What do you want from a free game? However, you can throw a tomato at me for the following phrase, but the donation here is not aggressive. Of course, in the store for real money, you can buy different equipment, but in my opinion, that's extreme. Whereas premium is a mandatory thing, and unfortunately playing without it is not particularly comfortable. That's why I recommend that you register through the link in the description, get a free premium, and enjoy playing for a week. Then you can decide for yourself whether it's worth staying in the game by renewing the premium or not. By the way, the community in this game is better than in the likes of World of Tanks. Believe me, I have compared. Conclusions? To be honest, I'm not a fan of military simulators. I much prefer dynamic shooters where a lot of events happen in a second, but from time to time I enjoy playing War Thunder. I turn off the sound in the game, turn up the music, and wreak havoc on the battlefield. I feel some kind of meditative vibe from playing on the fleet. Sinking someone's ship thousands of meters away from you is a separate kind of pleasure that I recommend everyone to experience. No, don't get me wrong, the sound in the game is good, see for yourself. to play with music, and you can write in the comments if you do the same, or if the atmosphere of the battle is more important to you. And now, I remind you that the link to bonuses at War Thunder will be in the description, and not just with bonuses, but with huge and cool gifts. Register, download, and play. Over the years, the game hasn't changed much. They only add new vehicles, but at its core, it's still the same as at release. Perfect balance. If you are looking for a time-tested project, then War Thunder is for you. It was, is, and will be around for a very long time. Alright folks, that's a wrap. Don't forget to smash that like button and hit subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest videos. Make sure to click that bell too, so you never miss out on any new content. Before you go, check out these two awesome videos that I highly recommend. Keep on rocking and catch you later!